So decision making is another area in which our work style is strongly influenced by our behavioural preferences. So in decision making, the general rule is we make decisions from our preference unless our environment forces us to do otherwise. So quick question for you, which of the behavioural preferences naturally make the best decisions? In actual fact, Reds make by far the highest number of decisions because Reds will make a decision there and then on the spot, as I said a moment ago, read, analyse, action. So make a decision. If a Red makes a wrong decision, for them, all they'll do is make a, another decision further down the line. Blues, however, make the highest percentage of correct decisions. And we'll kind of explore that a little bit more in a moment. So an individual with a, a green preference will make a decision based on their feelings unless specifically instructed to do otherwise. And in that situation, although they may comply, they will probably still seek out the opinions and support of others. People who have a dominant green behavior I can't say the word, sorry, behavioural preference, are the most comfortable solving the complex issue by seeking out the opinions of others, finding out what other people want to do, what do other people think. They'll of, you'll often find a dominant green preference person munching around, chatting to lots of different people, soliciting their thoughts and ideas. Although they'll listen to logical arguments and opinions, they will actually be most influenced by the person who quietly says something to them, something like, they have got a strong gut feeling about this. Green preference people will collaborate and listen to many people, and they are often happy to go with the majority decision, provided that solution doesn't, isn't actually harmful to other people. So in summary, a person with a dominant green behavioural preference needs time to talk to everyone about it, collect their feelings and identify a majority opinion. Controversial decisions are often avoided if at all possible, as they prefer to keep kind of things running smoothly. So if we now have a look at how people with a high blue behavioural preference actually make their decisions. And you can imagine it's done in a very different way. If you recall, the key drivers for Blue is about maintaining order and correctness. They want clear and detailed guidelines for decisions within their area of responsibility. They ask questions about where similar decisions have been made before or how previous decisions in this area have been made before. They'll not be rushed into making a decision until they have all the sufficient information and time to review all that information and match it against any guidelines there are. And they tend to often do this alone. Now, an example that some of you may, may be old enough to recall, when Gordon Brown became Prime Minister, he was criticised heavily in the press for being indecisive about going for a general election. In fact, he wasn't indecisive. Gordon Brown is just a very high preference blue and he'd not be pressed into making that decision until he felt comfortable that he'd got all the information that he needed to make that decision. The yellow behavioural preference. People with a yellow behavioural preference in situations which enable them to, to actually use that yellowness, the yellow talents and strengths, such as selecting a new approach to, to solving a difficult or complex situation, tend to make quick and intuitive decisions. And those decisions are often correct. They're reliable decisions, but they cannot be supported usually by evidence and logic. And this is an area where many organisations and risk averse managers lose out as a typical response to the yellow preference is to ask them to, to slow down a bit, consider the facts and to produce a more logical and factual kind of reasoning behind it. And this is like asking the yellows to write with the wrong hand. And 
as they start to try and find that facts and break it down into kind of logical reasoning, they start to actually confuse themselves. And once they start doing that, they can very easily then be talked out of it being such a great idea in the first place. Many entrepreneurs have stories to tell and you've only got to start talking to them about the major errors that they've made because they allowed themselves to be talked out of an intuitive decision. I actually have a personal experience of allowing my ideas to be talked down because I couldn't expand on why I knew my decision was the right decision. But I've also got an occasion when I had a manager who backed my intuitive decision, which if it had backfired could have cost the company about a quarter of a million pounds. The one big difference in this instance with the manager who backed me was that we had a very trusting relationship and he trusted me enough to know that if I was putting this forward as a solution, that I was fairly certain this was going to come up trumps and be a winning solution. And so he trusted me enough to actually back me. Unfortunately, it all paid off. So we were all happy. The red behavioural preference person will only make decisions about things they believe to be important in the long run. They'll not waste the time making decisions about things which have little or no consequence to the achievement of that bigger goal. They focus all of their energy and attention on those high yield tasks and drop tasks which offer little payback. They're very good at actually using the 80-20 rule. When they have a problem which they feel is worth their time and effort, they just want the key facts which they will then analyse and they'll look at the impact of each of the options and then select the option that will yield the highest return or, depending on the situation, the one with the least damaging outcome. The key to making great decisions is to be aware of your decision making style. Then ask yourself, is it appropriate for the type of decision which needs to be made? If not, then seek out help from someone who is a preference more aligned for the type of decision that needs to be made. Actually, perhaps this is a great area for mentoring to help you develop and be able to flex your style, navigate your behavioural map as we talk about in jigsaw terms. Over the years since the banking crash, however many years ago that was now, the media has reported time and time again about the poor quality of de decisions being made in organisations of all sizes and nature around the world. And decision making has been kind of named, it's on the top of the priorities list for those much needed areas of development as we go forward into 2021 and beyond.